Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. <coughs> this is video four of AP Physics chapter one. This topic is 1.7 vectors and vector additions. The objective of this video is to know the properties of vectors and to be able to determine the magnitude and the direction of the resulting vectors. So there are two kinds of quantities in physics. One is vector, the other one is scalar. The difference is vector has direction. A scalar has no direction. We have learned in last year um, the examples of vectors are displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, impulse, and other quantities. Examples of scalar quantities are distance, displacement, time, mass, energy, and so forth. Now vectors. Vectors shows magnitude and direction. It can be drawn as a ray, like such as this. So in this diagram, the length of the ray represent, uh, represents its magnitude. It's a scaled drawing, so it depends on the length of the ray indicate how big the magnitude is. The arrow indicate the direction of the vector. So these are <coughs> some properties. It's handwritten as a letter with an arrow on top. It has a starting position P1. It has an ending position P2. The direct distance, that's the size of the vector. And this vector can represent the displacement of A. Now, there are many ways to go from point P1 to P2. For instance, you can take this little path on the side. The displacement depends only on the starting and ending positions, it does not depend on the path. As a matter of the, uh, fact, this path can indicate distance traveled, and this direct distance, that is a displacement. If an object makes a round trip, the total displacement is zero, regardless of the distance traveled. So if you're starting and ending in one position, you'll have a zero displacement. Now you call an inverse vectors. So here are two vectors, a and a prime. They are the same. That is because they have the same length and they are pointing in the same direction. Now b is from p5 to p6. b and a are opposite. They have the same size, but they are going in the opposite direction. So B is a negative of A. So B and A, we call those are inverse vectors. Vectors may be added graphically. Head to tail, sometimes we call it tip to tail, or we can use parallelogram. Here are two vectors, A and B. So to find the resultant, we go from the starting, the uh, tail of A to the tip of B. That is your resultant. We add two vectors by placing them head to tail. The resultant is not head to tail. The resultant is from the beginning to the end. Adding them in reverse order gives the same result. So the order doesn't matter. You can use B plus A, you will have the same resultant. We can also add them by constructing a parallelogram. In this case, A and B, we call those the concurrent vectors because they are acting at the same point. So this diagonal line for this parallelogram is the resultant. The sum of two parallel vectors, if A and B are parallel to each other, the resultant is simply line the two vectors together from the beginning to the end. So this is the case of a maximum resultant. The sum of uh, two anti-parallel vectors. So here is A, here is B. This C equals A plus B. Since B is going in the opposite direction, this would be the minimum uh, resultant of A and B. Commutative properties of vector addition. Commutative means you can change different orders. Take a look at this A. To find the sum of these three vectors, A, B, C, you can add A and B together to get D first. Then once you have D, you can add D and C, you will get a result in R. Or you could add B and C together first. B and C will give you E. Then you add that E to vector A, you'll have result in R. 
or you can do A, B, and C to get R directly. A, B just continue. You'll have the same resultant. Or you can add A, B, and C in any other order and still get R. So order doesn't matter. R equals A plus B plus C or A plus B first. Then you add C or you can add B and C together. Then you add to A. Result and an equilibrium. So here is A and B gives you R. This R is the resultant. R is called the resultant factor. Equilibrium is the opposite to resultant. Same size, but it's opposite in the opposite direction. That E is called equilibrium. So E equals to negative R. To subtract vectors means you need to add negative. So C equals A minus B. How do we do that? We just uh, add it, add a negative. It's A plus negative B. Suppose here is A, here is B. How do you subtract the two vectors? Well, A subtract B is A plus negative B. So you just turn this B around. Here is A, you turn the B around. This is negative B. And this vector right over here, this is A minus B. You can line up two vectors, uh, tail to tail, draw a parallelogram. So in this parallelogram, there are two diagonals. This diagonal from the tip of B to tip of A, this is A minus B. Remember, A minus B is pointing to A. On the other hand, B minus A would be pointing to B. The other diagonal is A plus B. Now, obviously, to the other side would be negative A plus B. Let's take a look at this example. At a time t equals to t1, the object's velocity is given by the vector v1. A short time later, at t equals to t2, the object's velocity is the vector v2. So you can see vector v1 and vector v2. If the magnitude of v1 is the same as magnitude of v2, which one of the following vectors best illustrates the object average acceleration between t equals to t1 and t equals to t2? Remember, acceleration is defined as change of velocity over time. This time is a scalar quantity, so the direction of A is the same as the difference between V2 and V1. So basically, this question is asking you, what is vector V2 minus V1? What does that point into? Let's see. V2 is this way. Negative V1 would be pointing to the left. So the resultant would be going that way, right? From the tail of V2 to the tip of V1. So the answer is C. Another example. Vector V1 and V2 shown above, right? Actually, over here have equal magnitudes. The vectors represent velocities of an object at time t1 and t2, respectively. So the length of these two vectors are the same because they have the same magnitude. What is the average acceleration? What is the average acceleration pointing to? So this is, again, acceleration is the difference between velocity over time. So the direction of acceleration is the same as the uh, difference between V2 and V1. So V2 is going up. Negative V1 would be this way. So V2 minus V1 would be this way. And this direction would be north of west. The answer is E. Take a look. This is an example in your textbook. So cross-country skier skis one kilometers north, then two kilometers east on a horizontal snow field. How far and in what direction? So the magnitude and direction of this vector. Here is a diagram. So how far is this blue vector? What's the length and what is the direction? We can use the scale given to measure the resultant very carefully, or we can use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared. So I use the Pythagorean theorem is 2.24 kilometers. To find direction means to find this angle. So that phi actually should be immersed in of opposite 
which is 2 over adjacent, which is 1. So you should have 63.4 degrees. That is the direction. In this, uh, this would be east of north at 63.4 degrees. Now two displacement vectors. Here is another example, right? S and T have magnitude S is 3 meters and T equals to 4 meters. Which of the following could be the magnitude of the difference vector S minus T? So there are more than one answers. So remember, this works for S minus T or S plus T, right? It has to be smaller or equals to the two numbers added together and a greater or equals to two numbers subtract together. So you have three and four, maximum is a seven. And a minimum between three and four is one. Remember magnitude cannot be a negative. So it can be seven, five, one, and zero. So those are your answers. This is the last example. Match the folding vectors from the given diagram with answers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. A plus B. Which one matches A plus B? So here is A, here is B. Let's draw, since this concurrent vector, let's just draw a parallelogram. So here is a diagonals, two diagonals. This one, this is A plus B. And the other one, so from the tip of A, to the tip, uh, tip of B to the tip of A, this is really A minus B. So A plus B is this way. That is similar to what? A minus B is going down, which is 3. Now negative A minus B, that's the opposite of 1. Opposite of 1 is 2. B minus A is opposite of A minus B, which is 4. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.